Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Delicata Squash. That's right, I'm going to show you how to prep and cook what I think is the world's most exciting winter squash. And I know there's not a lot of competition, but this really is a great product and very much underused. And I think that's because it sort of looks and feels like one of those decorative gourds that your mom would put on the mantle around the holidays. But while it is very attractive, the real beauty lies within, as we're about to reveal. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. In the beginning, we need to do two things. Split this in half lengthwise and not cut off a finger. Okay, because these things are very hard, we have to be very, very careful. So what we want to do first is slice off both ends. Okay, that stem part that was attached to the plant is extremely hard. And if we don't remove that, this is a lot harder to cut. And then we'll spin it around and cut off the end where the flower was attached. And then what we'll do once those ends are trimmed off is sort of roll it around and try to find a spot that's maybe a little flatter than the other spots. And there might not be one, but whatever position you think is the most stable. And then what we'll look for is a seam that's right in the middle. And we'll start to cut in, but just barely. Because once that gets started, we want to take our other hand and use that to kind of pound the knife into the squash. And once there's no knife left to pound, we will switch to a rocking motion. And we'll simply rock it back and forth, applying a little bit of pressure until we finish that cut. And by using this method, there's very little chance you're going to cut yourself. All right, maybe a few of you will still manage. But since there's really no fingers coming close to that blade, this really is a pretty safe method. And then what we'll do once that's been split open is take a spoon and scrape out the seeds and any of those fibrous bits. And if this was another channel, I'd tell you you could save those seeds and roast them and then eat them. But I've never actually done that, so I don't really feel right telling you to. But anyway, we'll go ahead and remove those seeds as shown, at which point we will flip these over to the flat side and then proceed to slice these into nice evenly sized pieces. All right, I think a quarter inch is too small and a half inch is too big. So I'm gonna shoot for about three eighths. But as usual, you're gonna decide. You are after all the Peter Tosh of your delicata squash. Although when you do pick a size, you wanna stick with it. So these all cook at the same rate. And please notice I'm using what I call the sushi cut, which is where we find the mark with the front of our knife and then slice through with a very smooth, elegant forward motion. All right, one smooth slice should do it. Oh, and as you should have noticed by now, we didn't remove the skin. Okay, one of the great features about the delicata squash is that the skin is very, very thin, and once cooked up is not only edible, but extremely pleasurable. So anyway, we'll go ahead and slice those up. And if you have to clean up a few of those end pieces with a spoon, go ahead. And once those are set, we'll use our bench scraper to transfer those into a bowl where we're gonna season those with some olive oil, salt, and cayenne. And you would have seen me do that if my battery hadn't run out. But good news, I didn't actually put enough in. So I changed my battery and added some more. And to recap, that was olive oil, salt, and cayenne pepper to taste. And once that's seasoned up any which way you want, we'll go ahead and give that a toss to make sure that's all evenly coated. And you could just use your hand or a spatula. But of course, if you're cool and people are watching, you'll wanna give it a flip or two. And then once our squash are seasoned and well lubricated, we'll transfer those onto a sheet pan. And I'm using one of these textured nonstick ones, but a pan line with parchment or a silk pad would also work perfectly. And we'll go ahead and spread those out because of course we just want a single layer, just a single layer, just a single layer, just a single layer. By the way, I've heard Beyonce is a huge fan of the show. Well, not so much heard, but I assume. So we will transfer those to the pan and space them out as evenly as we can at which point these are ready to roast. So let's go ahead and transfer those into the center of a 450 degree oven for about 12 to 18 minutes, depends on the size, or until the bottoms are browned and they're nice and tender. So I let these go for about 12 minutes and I pulled them out to take a look and I gave them a little test with a toothpick and they were tender and the bottoms were browned, but I wanted them to go a little farther. All right, these were close, but I wanted a little more caramelization. So I decided to pop mine back in for about five minutes. And yes, you can flip them if you want, but I don't. I'm not against it. I love flipping things. Pancakes, houses, scripts. But I actually prefer the texture and appearance if one side is really brown and the other side isn't. But suit yourself. If you want to add a step, go ahead and flip them. But like I said, I went ahead and put those back in for five minutes. At which point I determined they were perfectly done. And at this point, they are ready to serve hot, warm, or room temp which is how I like them best. So I let these cool down all the way, because while they do make a fantastic side dish serve warm, 
My favorite use for these is served at room temp with a dip as a snack. So I transferred those to a dish with that beautiful brown side up and served it with the world's first pumpkin spice aioli. Actually, it was just curry spice. But since it's fall, we're going to brand that seasonally and call it a pumpkin spice aioli, mostly to annoy people on Twitter. And that, my friends, is an amazing, seasonal, possibly holiday snack. So let me go ahead and grab one of these and give it a dip. And possibly a double dip. And that really is an incredible treat. Right, that flesh is sweet and starchy and tender and sort of creamy. Plus, we have that very thin sort of snappy skin that I wouldn't really call crispy, but I wouldn't call it not crispy. It's just a really interesting combination of textures. And if you're repulsed by the thought of a pumpkin spice aioli, which you probably should be, which, as I said, was just a curry spice, this would be good with so many other dips. Okay, a lemon aioli would be great, or any kind of yogurt-based sauce. You will figure out something. But anyway, that's it. My favorite use for delicata squash. I always see piles of these at the store this time of year, but I never see anyone buying them. So hopefully this video might help with that because you'll make a batch and everyone at your party will be like, hey, what is this and how do you make it? So for those reasons and more, I really do hope you give these a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.